everyone and welcome to episode four of the Switch Abu podcast. I am Rochelle Suritaka and I have Alex Harding here with me. Hello. And do we have a big episode for you because the, you can go, yep, Alex. Yep, the, the Pokemon Direct at, um, dropped so this time yesterday. Uh, we tried to record a podcast. And we unfortunately didn't... had some technical difficulties. Yes, yeah, so now we've got to do it all again. But that's probably a good thing because we, we record here in, in South Australia and it was, what, 1 o'clock in the morning? I think it was like one forty-five. Yeah, in the morning when we finished recording and we were both pooped. Yeah, I, I, exhausted. I don't think you would have wanted to hear that podcast. So. No, I didn't want to hear that podcast. No, so. Ooh, I don't want to hear any of our podcasts, really. I don't want to hear my voice. <laughs> I can understand that, yeah. but last night's was ex- like exceptionally terrible. Like, it wasn't terrible. It was just rambling. Yeah, so let's make this one a bit better, a little bit more focused. It's good as well because now we can fi- we've finally let the direct digest a bit. That is and we've, true. And we've looked at it quite a yeah. few more times or quite a few dozen more times in, in um, my case. A, a lot of times. That's I've done that too, so yeah. I understand. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so yeah, we used to have fresh perspectives on it and we can talk a little bit about it a little bit more in detail, which yeah. is always going to be better. We want to dissect it as much as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Until there's nothing left. Nothing at all. But the bones. No, you won't even have to play the game. Yeah, we will. We, yeah, we've, we've figured everything out, the plot, the story. You've got you to gotta catch them all. That's, okay. that's the story. Alex, I think you should stop talking because... Am we I, don't ram- wanna, we am don't, I rambling again? We don't want to give everything away. That's true. That's true. Especially at the beginning and especially before... My uncle does work at Nintendo, so... What? He doesn't. He doesn't. I was about to say... It's, it's a joke. It's an inside joke. It wasn't a very... You wouldn't get it. <laughs> it wasn't a great joke. Um, But we definitely should start off with Switchaboo's fun fact of the fortnight. Yeah, so... Every, so every podcast, we start off the podcast with a little bit of a fun fact. Um, this one, because we're all, not only about the Pokemon Direct, but we're also going to be talking about the retirement of Reggie fils which is very, very sad. My body is not yet ready. No, neither neither is mine. Don't think anyone's is. No, we, we can never be ready for something like this. Um, but so basically, before Reggie started working at Nintendo, he took a job at Procter & Gamble in the company's broad management program. So in that, he did the marketing for Pizza Hut, where he launched the Bigfoot Pizza and the Big New Yorker. I've got no idea what those two things are, but they sound very American. Yeah, living in Australia. And that is a fact that I wouldn't have remembered off the top of my head. So thank you, Wikipedia. We, yep. We support, Thanks, Wikipedia. We support Wikipedia here. <laughs> no, I, I did fact check. It is. It does check out. Yep. Well, I mean, Wikipedia is normally our one-stop shop for sources. And by our, I mean mine. No, I go, I go to the references down the bottom. Yeah, well, I mean... Then you go to the primary source and you get everything from there. You can tell you've studied at university and know uh-huh, how to uh-huh. get around the can't use Wikipedia as a reference. Oh, I, I know. I know myself. That's... I, <laughs> I know my loopholes. Nope, that's great. That is... Absolutely great. But no, I did not know that. So that's pretty cool. Hmm. I mean, working for Pizza Hut must be good. I wonder how much free pizza you get. Even if you work in the corporate office, you must get free pizza. I'd hope so. Yeah, I would hope so too. I wouldn't want to work for a company and not get free pizza. Actually, the company I work for now doesn't give me free pizza. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah me neither. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, my free pizza. <laughs> I think we've been ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, back to um, back to Nintendo. So yeah, got, we should go- stop rambling. Yes, going t- into um, the Nintendo side of things, Nintendo, Nintendo news. Obviously, straight away, we're just going to talk about the Pokemon Direct because it was freaking awesome. And every single podcast—I mean, last podcast we talked about the Indies. Nope, the Direct. We talked about the Direct. Yeah, that was the Nintendo Direct. That one. And the w- one before that, it was the Indies one. I'm yeah, sure. the Indie highlights video. So. so so far, this podcast has just been us talking about talking about announcements. Yeah. <laughs> basically it hey that's not a bad thing no i mean could it be a bad thing no absolutely not it's definitely not a bad thing more more games the better absolutely that's that that is true i guess i can't really dispute you on that fact yeah but we should dive straight into the pokemon trailer yeah absolutely um so oh my god on straight just looking at it straight away it looks freaking gorgeous it's so beautiful. Yeah, I mean we've all we've all been waiting for a HD Pokemon for quite some time, and and let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee. While we still really like those games, mm. they 
the, they it, were it was, a there yeah. was they were a side quest to our main story. Exactly. This is this is what we've been truly waiting this for. This is what we have just been dying to hear. And I mean, I know so many Pokemon fans out there. They were waiting for like a proper, like you know, Gen game on a home console. Yeah, the let, core RPG. Yeah, yeah. Because Let's Go was great. It was so much fun. It was just a great throwback to the old games. But this is something completely new, and it just looks beautiful. And I can't wait to play it on my TV. Or yeah, well, actually, no. Let's be honest. I'll probably still play it in handheld. I'll have it connected. I'll have it in the dock. Absolutely. Cool. You can have it in the TV, and I'll just play it handheld. Play it on the couch. Yeah, that works. Yeah, why not? But the the first thing I no- I notice is the camera angles. And that's that's something complete because they've been they started doing that with Sun and Moon, um, where they started using different kind of camera angles and um, different and it it brings up like different dynamics and everything. Mm. Uh, so like in Pokemon Let's Go, it was it was a fixed bird's eye view, which was a real Pokemon. Like, you know, yeah, I mean, that's what it, they've done for most of their games. Yeah, exactly, and that's what they did obviously for Gen One. So mm. they kind of had to had to stick true to it. But I think with uh, Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, mm. um, they are finally so they're looking at it f- uh, from different perspectives. And yeah. each time, like each different um, area that you see in in there, it's it's always a different viewpoint. That's I do you know what I honestly hadn't even really noticed that that was something that i didn't Mm. notice at all because the first thing that i noticed when watching the trailer was what like how the gala region looks so much more like europe looked really british yeah so we had pokemon sun and moon which was all hawaii and you know beautiful and tropical and this definitely looks to me like britain where you've got like your ivy covered houses and it's absolutely gorgeous you've got your lakes you've got snow like snowy mountains you've got forests like yeah absolutely it just reminds me of the uk well someone actually mentioned um who's this someone i am a very big fan of game explain Mm -hmm. and of course i listen to their to everything that they discuss of course. and uh john from game explain because he's from the uk he actually mentioned that it's based um the gala region is basically just the uk upside down oh like that's just what that's just what the uk looks like upside down i totally that didn't even click to me yeah i no. mean geography was not my strongest subject and we're in a little little bubble here in australia that's true we are you know a massive island con island continent yeah so island continent. we really are in our own little bubble so now we just have to wait for one to be an australian based one yeah well a lot of people were thinking whether it's whether it's going to be like in australia or something um rumors have been floating not rumors but like a lot of buzz has been floating around saying oh we want one in australia because you know we've got the outback and a lot of animals that are god imagine all the new pokemon it would just be a bunch of snakes and spiders and some lizards that would be it not a kangaroo koala kookaburra yeah, kookaburra. Kookaburra will be a good maybe. one. Plat- Echidna. Is there a platypus Pokemon? I'm blanking out here. I feel like there's a platypus Pokemon. I honestly couldn't tell you. There's there's too many. Like, Mudkip? No, Mudkip's not. No, no. Mudkip's not a platypus. No, but I'm just trying to think what Mudkip is. Is he like a lizard? Is I'd... he a, a, what's it called? An axolotl? He's an axolotl. I think so. I, don't ha- I have no idea. No. Um... Look, Pokemon fans are probably screaming at us right now. Probably. Now, this was us last night, but just 10 times worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we've just reached the point in the trailer where you see, I'm assuming it's your character walking into a stadium. Yeah, Um. so this is actually quite interesting, whether it's... Because he's, he's pretty much... The character that's there, he's pretty much just in, like, soccer gear. Yeah. Or football, whatever, however you want to... Is this Pokemon Stadium it. inside a Pokemon game? Well, well, yeah. Um, like, or are you? Pl- but are you playing like mini games as well, like soccer? That would be cool. Yeah, because I mean, soccer is a massive part of not only UK, the UK but part of Europe, mm. and it's the world's game basically. But it's you know it's huge in Europe. So whether whether we w- we might be able to play soccer potentially, k- kick around a vault orb or something. That would just be mean. It would be, but especially because if he got pissed off, he would just you know self destruct. Yeah. Yeah. And then that would just, you know, endanger everyone playing. Sure, yeah. So, I mean, look, I don't know. I don't think they're going to be playing soccer. Personally, it'd be nice if they did. That'd be a nice little addition, but I personally so don't ch- think they will. Chuck in a Zuma. Yeah. I mean, look, 
Nintendo love just like throwing things together and being like, it works, it sticks. Like Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. It works, it sticks. Did it work? Look, I enjoyed playing many <laughs> hours as yeah, I didn't plays mind. playing the one on the Wii. So I think it was. That worked. was the first one, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. yeah. And it was fun. Yeah, no, I I, I enjoyed them. Anyways, um, <laughs> But yeah, so it could either it could either be like a side game, like like you just play soccer or something, or it could be the elite the elite four. Yeah, that's it, like the elite four, and you've got um, you know, you got your spectators like a massive stadium, which is pretty much like how it is in the anime. You yeah. know, when Ash gets to to the Pokemon League, is this kind of like the modern day Pokemon gladiators, basically? Oh god, well that's that's just a whole different <laughs> different ball game right there. That would be brutal. Mm. That would be probably worse than kicking around a Voltorb. I'm just picturing like a Nido King and a, or, and a Charizard just using those paddles. <laughs> like those padded paddle things and eh. hitting each other. Eh. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like that. I mean, that yeah. would be cool. But yes, no, I imagine it probably will be the Elite Four. Looking at um, looking at the characters, uh, Guernsey as well, I wonder if there's any significance to 227 I honestly have no idea. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's... Who is Pokemon two two seven? I don't know. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly Google this. Um, and okay, Pokemon two two seven. Cause is this like a nod or something? Uh, it's Skarmory. Maybe Skarmory is their Pokemon. Well, well, yeah. Maybe it's like a Skarmory is the mascot or something. Mm. How did no like I've never like I've listened to a lot of discussions today and, and all that and been looking looking things up and everything and yeah no one's ever said like oh what's 227 all that kind of stuff and i, I just saw it then because we had a pause on it and yeah maybe maybe skarmory is like the team mascot or something maybe yeah i mean there's always the option that that could be it yeah yeah one thing i did notice from the um is that pikachu's back <laughs> well yes that pikachu's back but just before that you see your character going through the set so of the, the grass and crouching well, no, no, that's that's been in it since Gen Six, I think. Has X it? And I y. cannot remember. Yes, that's been in it since X and Y. But no, Ignore there's me people. <laughs> there's random encounters again. Yes, I am totally gonna miss the non-random encounters. But I mean, it probably wouldn't be a core Pokemon hmm. game if it didn't have random encounters. Well, yeah, that's it. I mean, a, lo- a lot of people, even people that were critical of. Um, of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, they still liked that you could see the Pokemon just walking around. And I'm thinking, like, sure, like, that was that was a really cool feature and you can go up to the Pokemon that you wanted to. And it made the world feel more alive, like, more believable because you actually had Pokemon in the real world. That's exactly right. And it felt vibrant and, you know, and, and, and it just looked awesome. Like, you just and being able to ride Pokemon, you'll probably be able to ride Pokemon, yeah. I imagine. Well, I mean, maybe not, but like in Let's Go, it definitely, like you said, it was more believable because Mm. let's be honest, you're not going to have a random encounter of an onyx in a cave and just be like, oh my God, there's a massive Pokemon in front of me. You can actually see it moving and you're like, do you know what? I really feel like walking into that onyx Mm. and just aggravating it enough to make it fight me so I can catch it. Yeah. Or just, or, you know, walk around it as well. Like saying, nah, not today. Yeah. I don't want an onyx. There's a. It's too big. I just I, I need to run away. It's kind yep. of terrifying, looming over me like that. Yep. Um, but on the other hand, I can kind of see why because there's new Pokemon in this. Yeah. So and you wouldn't want to see new Pokemon because we all knew what we all knew the original 151. Yeah. So and we know I know them by the back of my hand. So it was by the back of your like hand? the back of my hand. But now there's new Pokemon and it's like we've never seen them before. So it's kind of that. That excitement of seeing is a red. Is it a new one? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. you see it for the first time, like, oh wow, what is that? Like, I wonder what type it is. I wonder, um, wonder what its evolutions are, and all this kind of stuff. So it's a bit more exciting. So is you... it cool? Do I actually want it? Well, yeah, that's it. And so it's it's more exciting to um, to just walk into the grass and thinking, am I going to encounter a new Pokemon or not? Mm. Rather than just seeing it, seeing that. I mean, I guess like it, if you saw it, there's like, oh, what is that? Let's run up to it, but. At the same time, I, I feel that kind of ex- I've always had that excitement with a new game and just coming across a random person, uh, person coming coming across a random Pokemon and thinking, "Wow, this is this is totally new." Yeah, I mean, I totally get that, but I also get 
like when you're kind of you've kind of gotten towards the end of the game and you're like okay I'm gonna finish it I'm gonna finish it and you're walking up and Pokemon just keep appearing left right and center and you're like ah that is true I because if you're like me you just never use any of the multiple repels that you yeah collect. yeah I rarely use repels yeah. in Pokemon let's go I mean I barely use repels at all so maybe that's something I should start doing yeah yeah that might be a good idea. Yeah, I guess I'm going to have to think about that for the future then. Yeah, good <laughs> for call. For this gen. <laughs> I guess something else we should probably touch upon is the new starters. Yes. Because um, they are absolutely adorable. I like them. Yeah. Um, I was I was a bit hesitant on them at first, but I, I think I'm always hesitant on starter Pokemon at first. Because um, they are just absolutely adorable. Yeah, exactly. So, so I, what are their names again? First, Tell us, Alex. <laughs> first off, we saw Scorch Bunny. Yes. So that was the fire rabbit. Yes. Um, I, I think he's my fire bunny. Yeah, he's my he's my least favorite. I reckon. Do you know bunny. what? He would actually be my least favorite too, which is really surprising because normally I find the fire starters to be quite a, like, strong and appealing Pokemon. Hmm. But this one just he didn't catch my attention. I feel really mean saying that because he was a really cute little bunny. But he is very cute. I just think his design is a little generic. Yeah, I guess. In saying that, though, I can't think of any other rabbit Pokemon. Please correct me. But I there is in Gen Five. Oh, Baneri. Oh, oh yeah. That's Gen Four, though, isn't it? Yeah, that's Gen Four. Oh, there you go. So, I mean, look, it's probably good they've you know recycled a rabbit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he just didn't catch my attention. But I am excited to see what his evolutions are. Yeah, because... that's a, that's the thing. We've only seen the first. Exactly, because that might change stage. my opinion completely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So Scorch Bunny, and then we saw Sobble after that. That's right. Sobble was like a chameleon, like a water chameleon. Yeah. He would. He would. Um. What's the word? Um. Water chameleon. That works. Yeah. <laughs> water chameleon. Lizard yep. of sorts. He reminded me of. Um, Kecleon. Yeah, yeah. He had a real yeah, being kind of, a camouflage Pokemon. Yeah, really just Kecleon vibe. Mm. Almost kind but of he, like a cross between Kecleon and a Trico. Trico? Yeah. I was thinking Mudkip. Hmm. Mm. Maybe a combination of the three. Wow. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I really like Sobble because it kind of has a very timid uh, personality from what I from what I gathered at the well, trailer. Well, from what they said, it's like it was very shy and yeah, they cute. said that he was really <laughs> he was really shy. So, like, you know, like, you don't want moves to startle him Mm. and things like that. And he'll just, you know, turn, not camouflage. Like, he'll camouflage into the background, into water, if he's startled. Which, I mean, is adorable. But he just looks really cute. And I love the look of his little hands. Yeah. They remind me of the chameleon from Tangled. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. His little hands. Yeah. So, it was just really, really cute. He's very cute. He's probably my second favorite and then alex who's my first favorite grookey he's so cute yes a little grass monkey yes he's adorable he looks very mischievous he does look really mischievous climbing up the chimney and whatnot Mm. he's just absolutely adorable and i mean it's good you know that they've done a nice looking grass pokemon this time because i remember everyone saying not the nicest things about um, the other grass type? Yeah, in Sun and Moon. Who was that again? The owl Pokemon. Oh, uh, Rowlet. Everyone loved Rowlet. Hmm. I loved Rowlet because Decidueye. Everyone wanted Decidueye in Super, uh, it was Super Smash Bros. Poplier that everyone Yeah, shit yeah, that's to. true. Ah, sorry. I'm confusing my Pokemon there. Apparently, I am getting tired tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Grookey's got to be my favourite as well. He's just, yeah, he's adorable and I like. I, I like grass type Pokemon. Yeah, they're a great starter. Yeah, and it's it's interesting they kind of went for Scorch Bunny, which is kind of like the cool ish, like the cool kind of Pokemon, um, cool and collected kind of Pokemon is what I mean. I guess when I think of other bunnies, I think of like Bugs Bunny, and Bugs Bunny is pretty cool. So yeah, yeah, okay, I can kind of get what you mean. Yeah, so you got the cool, cool and collected Scorch Bunny. You have the timid and shy Sobble, yeah, and then the mischievous Grookey. Yeah. So it's kind of like a not not just a um, dif- different like not just a clash of uh, Pokemon types, 
but a clash of personalities as well. That's really, yeah, I didn't think of it like that, mm. but it's, I do It believe, just came to me then. Yeah, I mean, it's the way that they presented them in the um, trailer, where you can really see their different personalities shining through. I mean, I would like to walk around with a Grookey on my shoulder, like... That would be cute. That would be great, like in Let's Go, like you have Pikachu sitting on your shoulder, you've got mm-hmm. Grookey sitting on your shoulder. I would love that. Yeah, but he hit you with the stick that he has. Well, I mean, ding, look. Ding, ding. <laughs> he might. But, I mean, look, if that happens, I'm sure I'd forgive him because he is adorable. Well, I'm, I'm assuming you're going to pick the grass. Um, you're going to k- pick Grookey. But like I said, I haven't actually seen the evolutions. So That's I true. Might yeah, you got to kind of hold out. Yeah. Because, I mean, like everyone, you know, didn't like Poplio, but I chose Poplio for mm. Sun and Moon. And I absolutely loved having him mm. as my starter. He was majestic as fuck. It was great. <laughs> so well, I guess I've got to see what the evolutions are yeah. and see what, I mean. Whatever you get, I can't get. Well, that's true. We're going to have different ones. Of course. And they haven't told us if it's just going to be grass, water, fire, if it's going to be like, you know, how the evolution sometimes change, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. So Decidueye was ghost. Yep. Poplio is... fairy. Yeah, evolution was fairy. Water and fairy. And then in... in not Inferno. Um, Incineroar. Yeah. Was fighting? I believe you're right. Or dark. Fighting or dark was one of the two. He was a wrestler Pokemon. Yeah. But I think he was dark. I don't know. I I was a like I'm a massive Pokemon fan, but this I, the past couple of gens have just not so stuck that, into my brain. Yeah. Unfortunately, mm. hopefully this one kind of changes it all. I definitely feel as though Pokemon. As much as I hate to say it, was getting a little bit lackluster before. It was growing stale. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I think the thing that really drew me in with this new one was the scenery. Because like I said, like it looks super British. And I think mm-hmm. something that I mentioned when I first saw the trailer is when I see your character walking down the steps from their house, it just reminds me of like the Shire. It reminds me yeah. of Hobbiton, which is just great. New Zealand. Yeah, okay. Kind of reminds <laughs> me... Oh, well, if I'd say New Zealand. It was, yeah, to- Middle Earth. Yeah, Middle Earth, Tolkien. He grew up in England, yeah. Yeah, I and it. I mean, even like the land itself, the Gala region, kind of reminds me of Westeros. Because mm-hmm. you've got like, you know, down the bottom where you've got your farmlands and you've got like, it looks really like scorched earth, but still a lot of greenery is kind of like dawn. And then as you move up, you get to like the snowy part. Well, we so you I, get to- I had a closer look at it. There's no desert in, in this but that's okay Whatsoever. because it still looks really scorched. Like the no. farmland looked really scorched. I wouldn't say yellow. scorched, it just looks green. Like it no, looks it look, sunny. It looked yellow though. If you see like, I guess that might be the fields of wheat. Still, it reminds me of Westeros. Fair enough. Apparently my mind is off in Game fantasy, of Thrones. In fantasy land. Oh, it's only six weeks for Game of Thrones. Okay, this is not a Game of Thrones podcast. But Game of Thrones, six weeks. Yeah. The last season. Okay, anyway, moving <laughs> on. We... I, could, I could talk about Game of Thrones for a whole podcast. You probably could. But probably not this one. Mm, probably not the best time, yeah. I guess, I don't know if there's any... Is there anything else you want to talk about with the um, the names, maybe? Sword and Shield? Yeah, that's that's actually a really interesting one because it doesn't... Because normally with the with the names of Pokemon games, um, that kind of... That's a, that's a hint towards the legendary Pokemon. Yes. So, I mean, is this going to be like a sword legendary and a shield legendary? Well, they they have done sword before, so they did um Age of Slash. That's right, they did. I think Gen Five, I want to say. I think it's Gen Five. They all kind of blur together. Look, I've got no idea what yeah what the Gen is, but yes, no, you're right. They did, but they might do another one. That's Pokemon's true. Pokemon's not, you know, like the Pokemon Averse company. doing it again. Yeah, they yeah. they sometimes repeat things, and that's fine. We don't hold it against them much. So. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I'm not sure about other people, but I don't. Well, I mean, I have probably not the strongest feelings about that no but it, I don't it, care it, too much. it is just interesting because from the design of the actual logo it's just it's the same head like you, yeah, you see that little it almost looks like lion a wolf, head. it looks like a wolf's head to me though. yeah wolf head lion head yeah something like that like the, like the teeth one is a dog and one is a cat so you're getting very mixed up they probably yeah more like, more like a wolf more yeah, like a wolf yeah exactly um but yeah it, it does dire wolf maybe sure but it, it doesn't represent the actual like what the what the legendary for might be. For all we know, for all yeah, we know, at it the could moment, be a yeah. wolf Pokemon, like some crazy. But are they both wolf Pokemon then? They might be because the wolf head is on both Sword and Shield. Yeah, 
I mean, look, it might be. They might be like siblings or... Siblings? No, maybe not siblings. That's probably not the... Are you thinking like Latios and Latios? Yeah. Like the kinda, same kind of Pokemon? Yeah, kind of mm. like that maybe. Could be. I mean, yeah, we don't know. There might be two legendaries. There might just be the one. I'm assuming there'll be like... There, won't be, there won't be the there'll one. There'll be like though. four or five. Yeah, there's normally the two main... legendaries. Yeah, there's normally the two main ones and then the third one. Like you had um in Gen 5, Cure... No, um, so Reshiram, uh, Zekrom, and then... Curum. See, for me, it's like Groudon, Kyogre. Yeah, that, that's, prob- that's, that's probably a better example, yeah. Um, so you've always got that third legendary, and then you've got like kind of like the sub-legendaries from there. Like yeah. in that in Gen 3, you had, um, after that, you had uh, Regirock, Regice, and Registeel. Yeah, exactly. So you've kind of got your sub-legendaries. So it's usually like six to eight legendaries. Now. I think in my head I said one legendary because I was just thinking like it's the same head. But no, I think it'll most likely be two. And I think they'll be like similar in yeah. the way that Latios and Latias were similar. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I get you. So I think that that will be it. And I mean, you get to see a glimpse of like a really shady forest. When I say shady, <laughs> it's like um, very shadowy, a shadowy forest. Yeah. So I think that that might be where the legendary lives, mm. if it's a wolf. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, do you know what I mean? Wolves live in forests, and it looks like kind of like a dark and dingy, maybe not dingy, but a dark forest. That's where I imagine a wolf legendary would live. The, um, so the forests that look, look kind of like misty and foggy. Like the Forbidden Forest from Harry Potter. Yeah, this is Pokemon though. Okay, so it's just like a magical wolf. Living in a dark forest. But this is Pokemon, though. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Look, I'm just in a fantasy world tonight. I'm all about my Westeros. Yeah. My and Harry Potters. My Harry Potter. My Lord of the Rings. Just well, all about that tonight. Let's go away from that for a sec. Let's go away from Pokemon. Let's go to the real world. Sure. I don't know if I'm ready to commit to that. Though. I know reality. No, mm. I don't no, like. No, I, don't, no, no. I don't really like reality. Not at all. Um. But yeah, to talk a little bit more about Reggie. He, the 57-year-old Reggie is retiring. 57 is quite a young age to retire at as well. That really is. Can you imagine if we all got to retire at 57? Oh, that'd be nice. I mean, we still have many years until we retire, but yeah. can you imagine like if everyone got to retire at 57? That would be glorious. Yeah. But I mean, well, he's worked of, really hard. Yeah, and the amount of money he's probably got anyways. I mean, he's, pro- he's probably fine, but but yeah, he was with us. It, well, I say us. He was with Nintendo of America for... So four, us. Yeah. <laughs> For 14 years. Which, which is, is a long time. Yeah, exactly. And I think, how much how much is that? If I can do the math in my head, I think that's like five years less than Minoru Arakawa, who was the president before Reggie. Well, there you go. Yeah. So, I mean. So not as, not as long as Arakawa, but still, it's still quite long. He's done a really good job as yeah. Nintendo of America's president. Like, he's done a really, really good job. So, I mean, look, I can't fault him. He he deserves his retirement. He's done a good job at kind of, you know. Yeah. But like like all things like all good things must come to an end. It's exactly. it's still upsetting to, you know, kind of see him go. I guess that that is true. I think the thing that I'm most upset about and I'm definitely kind of angry at him because he's left us in the hands of Bowser. <laughs> and I honestly I just don't know how he could do that to put us in the hand of the enemies. I yeah. Like who just hands over the company to the enemy? <laughs> <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, the new head of Nintendo of America is Doug Bowser. Yes, that's that's his actual name, his Doug actual Bowser. His actual name is Doug Bowser. Mm. There is a photo that I believe we posted on our Facebook page, which has him, you know, he's got his sign saying hello. But in the background, he has a little plushy Mario and Luigi tied together. With a GameCube uh, controller. Yeah, he is Bowser. Well... I mean, he might be. We haven't seen him in action yet. No. So, I mean, as long as he doesn't kidnap any princesses, I think we'll be fine. That's it. But I, I, it's certainly um, reassuring to see that kind of playful side to the new uh, president of, of Nintendo of America. Well, I mean, that's just like what Reggie was like. Yeah, exactly. So he's kind of saying that, you know, I'm new... But I'm still going to keep that, you know, family-friendly, Guys, you know, I'm one of you. I'm yeah. one of you guys. Yeah, ex- well, that's that's exactly it. I, th- I think he's trying to say that, you know, nothing's really going to change. Uh, I'm still going to, like, 
I still want to um, bring that same that same humor, that same um, that same entertainment that Reggie did. I mean, well, no one can really replace Reggie, but no, I, not I think, really. I think if once we see more of Doug uh, Doug Bowser at probably E three, yeah, once we when, see him in action, yeah, because Reggie normally does um, E three because it's you know obviously held in the United States. I think Los Angeles. I think um, so to have. Uh, Doug Bowser be the face of that now. He'll probably do the direct, um, do the E three direct and everything. So I'm very curious to see how that all goes. Yeah, I mean, it might go really well. It might not. I have a feeling it'll probably go really well. Yeah, I'm, look, as long as I'm he excited. gives me information about Animal Crossing, I'll be fine. <laughs> I will be okay. Yeah, yeah, that that's it, Doug Bowser. If you're listening, which you're probably not, <laughs> you definitely wouldn't be. Um, but the, the way to Nintendo's fans' hearts is to show off Animal Crossing Switch. Yeah. That'll do it. Exactly. We'd all love you for that. You will win us over and we will not hold your name against you. Won't we? Okay, a little bit, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're not going to lie. We probably will still a little bit, but... Oh, the the jokes will last for years. Until until he retires. Yeah. Even after he retires, probably. Yeah. The same way that after Reggie retires, everyone will still be saying, my body is ready. I think that meme has gone beyond gaming and Nintendo. I have a feeling a lot of people don't realize that it was Reggie who started that. Well, they probably don't know, even know who Reggie is. The people who, like a lot of people who use it, they just say my body is ready, but they're like, what? that's just a, that's just a meme, but they don't know. It's like a lot of memes. You don't really know where they are, where it's, it started. It's like a lot of things like dabbing. I still don't know what dabbing is. I don't understand why people dab, what the point of dabbing is, but I see a lot of youngsters doing it. When I say youngsters, I mean, I'm only, what, 23? But, like, anyone to the age of, like, 15, youngster. Actually, really, the age of 18, youngster. Yeah. So when I see them doing it, I'm like, what are they doing? Unless you can drink legally here in Australia. Yeah, basically. Yeah. If you can drink legally here in Australia, you're fine. If you're not, if you can't, you're a youngster. That's it. That's probably the way. Youngster Joey in his shorts. Yeah. (laughs) Basically. So basically, everyone under that age is youngster Joey. Yeah, exactly. Practically, yeah. Ba- basically. So I guess we should probably move on to the Detective Pikachu trailer. Yes, it looked so cool. Ryan Reynolds is a god. I wouldn't go that far. No, nah, I think he's he a is god. pretty cool though. He's he, awesome. He surprised like I was so apprehensive about Ryan Reynolds as Pik- as Detective Pikachu, and the first trailer I was still a bit. Mm, it's it's just jarring. It's weird, but. I think this trailer really showed it, really showed it off, and I think it, I think it's it's become it's gelling with me more. Yeah, I mean, I know that as soon as Detective Pikachu was re- not released, announced, mm-hmm. everyone was like, "Danny DeVito, Danny DeVito, yeah. you'd be the best," you know, Pikachu voice. But I think that Ryan Reynolds is doing such a good job from what I've seen so far. I mean, obviously, we've only seen the trailers; we haven't actually seen the film. But I think he's really going to bring something unique to the character yeah absolutely kind of, kind of deadpool-esque yeah that's really yeah he's, 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 yeah he's, he's got that ryan reynolds brand Charm? of brand no, brand of humor yeah which is hilarious yeah very dry kind of well yeah of course because before they released the trailer they released like a little what was it behind the actor's studio or something mm-hmm. like that which had ryan reynolds talking about how he got into character for Detective Pikachu, and he had they had his wife Blake Lively on there too, and they are just both so funny. I mm-hmm. mean, I know that she's not in the film, but he is just such a funny man naturally that I cannot wait to see what he's done. Yeah, if, like, if, with the character. Yeah, listeners, if you haven't if you haven't seen that video, definitely definitely watch that. It's it's funny. It's it, very good. Yeah, I mean, both of them are great, mm-hmm. and I mean, you get to see more Pokemon in this trailer as well, and you get to see the special Mewtwo flying out right at the end. Yeah, that looked interesting. Like it looked good. It, it looks terrifying. Very terrifying. But I mean, he always look, he always kind of looked terrifying. Yeah, no, that's that is true. Like I guess. even in Let's Go, he's really intimidating. And yeah, you're like uh huh, okay. I think I think it's just jarring to see any of these any of these Pokemon look you know in like a realistic setting. That's true. Like Lick Tongue looks terrifying. Terrifying. Yeah. Abs- like that's gonna haunt my nightmares. Or Psyduck. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Honestly, I don't know how I'll be able to sleep after seeing those ones. But then you had ones like Snorlax just sleeping on the street. Like and he's furry. He is furry. Mm. Which- I did. I didn't think. 
I've, n- I've never thought of Snorlax as furry. No, neither have I, but apparently he is. So, yeah, like... I, I, it's a, it's a whole it's seeing it through a whole new it really whole new light. it really is like yeah. I just couldn't like my imagination could have gone as a wild and I don't know if I ever would have picked those choices. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess seeing more into the, into the movie as well, like we're starting to see more about the not necessarily the plot, but a li- well, yeah, a little bit of, a little bit of the plot, and it's like it's it's starting to get a bit more um a bit more drawn out, and we're starting to see more of the characters' quirks, yeah. and everything. So we we saw Detective Pikachu and his copy addiction, yes, that we yeah, did, which is relatable, hilarious, like it's yeah, hel- hilariously relatable. It was just. Weird to think to think of a Pikachu with a caffeine addiction. I mean, look, some of them most likely have a berry addiction, but <laughs> I mean, I don't know whether they'll talk about such serious issues in the film yeah. as a, as addiction to berries. <laughs> Maybe it's a cure for poker Ross. Potentially. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. But I mean, look, I honestly, I have nothing but praise. For what I've seen, mm, so I'm really far. excited for it. I know that a lot of video game movies, like when they come to cinemas, you get so hyped up for them, and then you go and it's such a letdown. But the cast that they have, what we've seen so far, it looks amazing. And I mean, Pokemon movies are usually pretty good. I mean, I know they're normally animated, but they usually do a really good job. And the Pokemon company doesn't really like stamping their brand on things unless it's of a, you know. That's High that's very quality. true. So, I I'm excited. Yeah, I've 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 got faith in it as well. Again, I think everyone had their apprehensions at first, but as soon as like we've seen more trailers, we've seen more of the of the movie itself, and yeah, it it looks fantastic. I'm really excited for it. Yeah, so I guess so like we'll, May 10th as well. Yeah, which is quite soon, really, yeah. if you think about it. So I guess we'll just have to make sure we do a podcast after we see it because we'll be going to see it. Midnight screening. Midnight screening, first yep. day, whatever they have, the very first. We'll be there. Yeah, we will be there at the first screening. We yeah, will. I'm super excited. We for that. might just crash the you know opening, the opening. <laughs> It was a bit expensive. It's okay. We'll go overseas. It's fine. Oh, sure. We'll just chuck a few thousand dollars down. I mean, look, this is a once in a lifetime moment. So I guess we might have to. I think I'm okay with letting this moment slide. Mm, I'm not. Well, have fun over there. Okay. You'll you'll see me on the cameras <laughs> and you'll be like, oh, there she Should've is. Should have been there. Should have gone. Mm-hmm, exactly. And then I will spoil the movie for you. So. Damn, you would. <laughs> I, I would. That's true. You will. Mm. And I guess the last piece of news, something that was announced today so that we missed on last night's atrocious podcast mm-hmm. was really that they have announced Pauline as an unlockable character for Mario Tennis. Yeah, in, yeah, Mario Tennis Aces. Yeah, it's um, I I've been it's, as soon as Super, we had Super Mario Odyssey and uh, then we had uh, like Mario Tennis Aces was announced like a few months afterwards. I was like, yeah, you've got to have Pauline in there. Because um, Pauline's become kind of like a, a staple character. I mean, she was before Peach, um, like back in the original uh, arcade Donkey Kong games. But yeah, to actually see Pauline as a playable character, she's really starting to come in as her own and be her own, her own character, her own thing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they've really, they've created her. She was like... They've recreated her. Yeah. Hmm. They brought her back. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, now she has her catch, you know, catchy song and everything to kind yeah. of go with her. It's great. Yeah. Whenever you see Pauline, it's always with that song now. Dun, 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 dun. Like, it's great. Yeah. It's really, really good. Yeah, exactly. Maybe we should just put that playing in the background while we're talking so people don't have to hear our atrocious singing. It wasn't that bad, was it? I mean, look, I've heard better. It's better when Pauline sings it. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> sure, yeah. But, I mean, like, it's great that they really are introducing her into a whole bunch of new things. It's kind of like instead of creating new characters, they're recreating the old characters. Yeah, exactly. Nintendo has a, you know, a plethora of all these different... Um, all these different characters and they can even they can go back to old like Super Mario Land games and like there's just so much little tiny details there they, they can really fish uh, really fish out yeah and they really can and it's so great that they're actually doing it so I mean I guess we just have to wait 
to see what happens next. And yeah. see what she's actually like as a character in Mario Aces. Apparently she's speedy. Oh, she's a quick one. Good. I, li- I like the speedy Yeah, characters. you do, don't you? Mario Aces, Super Smash Brothers. I like the speedy ones. Mm. I find that they're just fun to control. <laughs> Zero Suit Samus, mate. Yes. <laughs> I do love Zero Suit Samus. Uh, it doesn't beat Link. Mm-hmm. Sure. Or Toon Link. Or Young Link. Any of the links, they're all good. That honestly could just be because I'm terrible at the game. That's that's true. So that's, that's very true. <laughs> they're fun to control. I just have no idea how to control it. <laughs> I'm just a prime button masher. I'm just all over the. Ugh, you're one of them. Yes, I am. <laughs> it doesn't only end up well for me. So I guess now we move on to the third, third to last thing of the podcast. What have you been playing recently, Alex? Um, Normally we do it before we start talking about yeah, the news, we kind of, but we were super excited this week, so we're just going to shuffle that one down to the bottom. What have you been playing? Um, I have been playing Ape Out. Yes, I did see you play a bit of it, and it looks yep. kind of hectic. Yep, um, Michael, uh, one of our new writers, Michael, has put up his review. Um, we posted that literally, literally just before this podcast. <laughs> oh, wow. We started well, recording go. it, so that's, that's up and ready for you, but... Um, yeah, a- Ape Out, so it's devolve- uh, published by Devolver Digital, who we all know for fantastic indie games. Um, it's a so it's a Switch console exclusive. You have it for PC as well. Um, it's You're basically an ape who has escaped from various scenarios, like you know science, science labs and um, big buildings and all that kind of stuff, and you just go around and kill people and try to get out and try ape to escape. smash! Pretty much. And it's... It's just fun. It's just mindless fun. It's kind of a short game. You can probably beat it in like two and a half hours, two and a half, three hours. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just it's just fun. Like there's nothing more to it. There's no story or anything. It's literally just get out there and smash. And, you know, sometimes it, sometimes that's all you need. Yeah. That's what you really need because we've also been playing uh, a puzzle game called Bubba Is You, which is under embargo and I can't. I can't talk about, mm. um, but being a puzzle game, like it's it's good to not talk too much about it because it's still under embargo. No, no, I know, <laughs> um, but like it's it's good to it's challenging. Yeah, yeah, it, but it's it's good to go away from the puzzle aspect and then just you know play as an ape and smash things. Yeah, and sometimes you need that anger release when you're playing puzzle games. Yeah, exactly. And by sometimes I mean all the time. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's just mindless fun. Absolutely, absolutely, check out Ape Out. Yeah. It's a really, really good game. Cool. Mm. Um, what else have I been playing as well? Oh, I just finished Torn of the Golden Country, which I talked about, I think, like a month ago, and I finally got around to finishing it. I honestly can't remember. Yeah, it's it's good. Um, I I definitely prefer the, you know, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 over the DLC. Yeah. I think, I think it was just a bit more fleshed out, and a lot of the things seemed a bit dragged out and rushed in Torna. Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, no, still enjoyed it. And starting on Sushi Striker yeah. and Agatha Knife. It's I've, I've got too much. <laughs> Way so too much. much going on for you, um, the... Yeah. Let's, let's try and narrow it down. Rochelle, what have you been playing? I have... I, th- I know I said last podcast I was playing Little Dragons Cafe. I've still been playing that, and it's still heaps of fun. But otherwise, I've been sinking a lot of time into Tetris 99. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about Tetris 99. It is so addictive. So addictive. It's one of those things where you'll be like, I'm just going to play one game before bed. Yep. And then an hour later, you're like, why can I not win? Why is everyone ganging up on me? Th- like. Well, the best I've ever come was like eighth or ninth or something. What about you? Yeah, I think the best I've ever come would be ninth. It gets hard. Like as soon as it gets to the last ten, it goes really quickly, and I, d- I just freak out. Uh, yeah. As soon as things start like dropping really fast, I'm like, I just don't know what to do, and yeah. I start stressing. And then as soon as I start stressing, I lose straight away yep. to the Tetris pros. Yeah, there's some really, really good players out there. Yeah, if if you're listening and you're one of those players who's come first, I salute you. Stop. Okay, well, I salute you. (laughs) Let me win one. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing how well that some people do playing that game. It's insane. Have you seen the the Tetris like tournaments and all this kind of and all this? No, I haven't. They, I've I've got to show you. They are intense. They're Uh, really, really great. Do you know what? That actually doesn't surprise me at all. And after this podcast is done, before. I head to bed. I will probably play more Tetris ninety nine. Yep. It's just it's too good. It is. It's it is so good. much fun. It's and again, it's it's kind of similar to Ape Out in that 
well, not in gameplay, but it's it's just mindless fun. And it's one of those things like everyone's kind of doing their own battle royale sort of thing. Yeah. Like you've just had the release of Apex Legends. You've got Fortnite, Fortnite PUBG. PUBGs, that kind of stuff. I think Call of Duty have a version. Yeah, Black Ops. Yeah, in Black Ops Four. Yeah. Yep. And like everyone's doing it, and I love that this one's so different to the rest of them. And I am like I haven't played any of the other ones. I attempted Fortnite and was. T- terrible um <laughs> so it's nice to have something that i can kind of do well at yeah. but also like i don't have to run around with a gun and <laughs> attempt to shoot people. yeah I, and i think that was the problem like as soon as people people saw battle royale they just thought of shooting they just thought it was it was simply a shooter genre like ex- exclusively and I, th- I think that's why I like um, Nintendo and like those kind of developers and they just try to think outside of the box. You know, oh, we got Battle Royale, but it doesn't have to be about this specific thing. We can yeah. try doing this with it. And that's, yeah, and then Tetris, Tetris 99 comes along. And the best thing is it's completely free. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I know a lot of your Battle Royale ones are, but yeah, it's completely free. Completely you free just... with the Nintendo Switch Online. Maybe. Yes, you need your Nintendo Switch Online to be able to play online but mm-hmm. i mean that's the same as any other console really like yeah to play online for your xbox or for your playstation you, you need to be a member with them so mm. it's pretty good and i mean nintendo's memberships dirt cheap yeah it's so cheap 30 australian dollars which is nothing. 20 US, yeah 20 us dollars or it's like for us it's 55 australian dollars for the family membership yeah which is like eight different people which is what we've done and, and they just split it between eight of us Say so what? It, what's what's fifty five divided by eight? That's I, I should know this better. Um, seven. Seven. It's like yeah, just under seven dollars per yeah person, which, which is, is it's ridiculously yeah, cheap. and, that, and, and that's a whole year. And you know what? It's so worth it because the hours of fun that so far I've gotten out of Tetris ninety nine, it's so worth it. And then of course you know you get your your Smash Brothers and all that kind of stuff. Too. Yeah, yeah. On top of that, yep. Yeah, that you can go and, and the play. NES games, which yep. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've played them all kind of to death, and I don't really want to play them again. But it's nice to have there. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, honestly, just get it for Tetris ninety nine if you don't already have it. Agreed. And and, and just, Smash Online. Because it's just so, so good. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, we should probably move on to the final part of the podcast, yep. which is the questions. Alex, what are our questions this week? Um. So first off, we we kind of touched it on on before, but just really quickly. Who are you picking for your starter Pokemon? Uh, it's going to be between Grookey and Subble. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. I need to see the evolutions, but I'm pretty sure it'll be, be between the two of them. And, and the top pick will probably be Grookey. Yep. And mine will be the other one that you choose. Subble. Maybe. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see about the next evolutions. But yeah, <laughs> we, can, we can't have the same starter Pokemon. No. We can't do that. Um, that was just a quick one, but the other one, um, I noticed in the uh, the Pokemon Direct that, uh, I, I can't remember his name, but he said, one of them said that there is more Pokemon stuff coming in 2019. Expect. I believe that's going to be a, the next version of Let's Go, so it'll be Let, Let's Go Johto. Well, no, he said they're, they're, they're releasing games, more Pokemon games in 2019. I know, but I'm pretty sure that they're going to be announcing a Let's Go. No, nah, well, for me, I th- I think that because they normally announce um a Pokemon adventure game, you know, RPG game, early in the year, so like February, March, April, like around there, and then they release it in November. So I think like when they say more Pokemon games, I'm thinking you know you've got your spin offs like your Pokemon Rumble and all and all that, those kind of Pokemon games. Pokemon Pimble. Pokemon Pimble. I would love yeah. Pokemon Pimble again. Yeah, like maybe Pokemon Pimble, maybe Pokemon Snap, like stadium <laughs> to yeah. link in with the game yeah well maybe um but like yeah so what do you think that could be like he's, he said Look, oh we've got more pokemon titles titles more than more than one they could be releasing another mobile game i highly doubt it but they could but i would love it if they would bring back pokemon pinball because mm. i mean i had it on the game boy advance but then i also bought it on my wii u yeah and i like, played the original one on, on game boy color yeah, that yeah. that was the better one. That was the OG one. That was really good. And I never played that. Yeah, I it, played it, the Ruby and Sapphire one. Yeah, um, the Pokemon. So the the Pokemon Pinball in on the Game Boy Color, it actually had a battery pack. Like you can put um, a AAA battery in there, and it, it, the cartridge rumbled. 
Wow. Yeah. No, I did Old school rumble. I honestly didn't know that. Mm. Maybe it was before my time, you old man. Ouch. <laughs> that, that cuts deep. Real deep. It's, I'm, only, I'm two years older than you. But yet the differences are still so clear. Ugh. <laughs> what about you? What do you think it will be? Um, well, I think there's a difference between what I think it will be and what I hope it will be. What do you hope it will be? Well, let's go Pimble. with that then. Pokemon Pinball. Pokemon Pinball. No, a new Pokemon Pinball would be fantastic, I reckon. I reckon it'll be good for the Switch as well, like perfect with the two, like with the triggers. Obviously, it's not new, but like I think that's like just bringing Pokemon Pinball. But if they're going to oh. do that... Ooh. Oh, I just had a thought. I just had a thought. What if you can... Because you can like with, with the flip grip um, or like you can, you can put things into arcade mode. Mm. You could have Pokemon Pinball in arcade mode, in a vertical. How oh. cool would that be? That'd be awesome. Like to have Pokemon... To, because I mean, if you had the flip grip, I I would highly recommend you buy one. It would um, be pretty awesome. Yeah, you can play. So with the flip grip, you can play in vertical mode, like in arcade mode, um, in handheld, and you just connect the Joy Cons to the side. Um, but the thing is, but to have that in po- like pinball, Pokemon pinball, would be if perfect. they if they released another Pokemon pinball, they would probably make it a tie in to the latest game, the same way that when they did Pokemon yeah. pinball on the advance. It was related to Ruby and Sapphire. Yeah, I'm cool with that. So that that means that this would be like a Pokemon Pinball, like Sword and Shield version with the Sword and Shield legendaries. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't know whether they would release that before the new games then. That's a good point. Because... But I want them to. Okay. I want it. (laughs) Unfortunately, I have no say whatsoever. I'm just here to speculate with you. And crush my dreams. Yes, that too. That's probably what I take the most fun. How dare you? Well, I mean, we all need to get our fun somewhere. Sure. But, yeah, I would ho- I would want it to be a Pokemon Pimble because I love Pokemon Pimble. But what I think it would be, maybe a Mystery Dungeon. I would love it if they brought Mystery Dungeon to the Switch. I really enjoyed the Mystery Dungeon games um, on the DS. Mm. So I would love it if they did that, but... I just hope it's not another Pokemon Rumble or, like, another Pokemon Puzzle game. I mean, I don't mind them per se, but it, they're just not exciting. They're just meh. Mm, I just mean, meh. Look, we we have really no idea, so I guess all we can really ask for is what is your opinion? So I guess shoot us an email at team at Switchaboo or alex at Switchaboo and we'll be able to... Dot com. Dot com. <laughs> yeah, at switchaboo.com. And then give or us, you, you give can us even, your thoughts. Yeah, and you can even tweet out to us um, at Switchaboo News. Yep, or you can get in contact with us on Facebook or Instagram or at Switchaboo. YouTube, any, anywhere really. Yeah, we're at Switchaboo on Facebook and Switchaboo News on Instagram. I think just Switchaboo. Just Switchaboo. I, sh- I should know this considering I do all the social media stuff, but I'm pretty sure it's just Switchaboo yeah. uh, Instagram on Instagram. But um, another bit of exciting news, I guess we could say, is we just launched a Patreon. Woo! Yeah, and it's it's just a fun. It's just another way to, I guess, to interact with you guys. But um, it's also a way that we can ask for your help. Yeah. Um, it's any any um, contribution would be greatly appreciated, no matter how great or small. It um, is absolutely wonderful considering Switchaboo is just run by at the moment five people who absolutely love the content that we create mm. and everything. And we've we've just brought on Michael and Matthew. Yeah, so as new writers, so we're really trying to expand, and we, like you know, we love it. We're doing everything out of our own pockets, and if you love it too, like it, literally a dollar, a dollar will help a month. Yeah, absolutely. And if you um if you donate five dollars per month, you get this podcast two days early. Yeah, which is so a fun who doesn't bonus. want to hear our beautiful voices two days early? That's it. We like, do have beautiful voices. Yeah, and I'm sure they sound really Aussie to anyone who's not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> an Aussie. C- yeah, mate, give me a dollar. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no. Give me a dollar for the bus. No. Yeah. No, we, no, no. We would love it if you would donate at least a dollar, but. I need to catch the bus. <laughs> On that horrible note, <laughs> thank you so much for listening, guys. Um, we'll see you uh, next fortnight. Yes, next fortnight. I wonder what exciting things we have in store. Who knows? I really, I can't see anything happening for about a month Neither or so. Neither can I. So next fortnight, it might just be like our first podcast, our normal podcast, where we don't <laughs> yeah. recap a video. Yeah. I mean, and at that point, we'll talk about the news, we'll do a few questions. We can even just maybe start doing some games, Not like guessing games, all that kind of stuff. That would be heaps Yeah. Of I just so, had that idea. Yeah. I, I guess stick with us 
and we'll see where it goes. Mm. Easy. See you guys. Bye-bye.